Hello? You want to model crystal plasticity by UMAT in Abacus. First, you need to understand the basics of the crystal plasticity. What happens into the material when you apply load? To understand how to do that, stay with us in this video. First, let's talk about the theory of crystal plasticity. When you apply a load to a sample, you will find that the formation occurs in a specific planes. And if you focus into the material, you will find that these planes are the planes with maximum atomic density. In other words, if you apply a load, and decompose these loads to, to each atomic planes, the formation occurs in the planes with maximum uh, decomposed stress. We call it resolved shear stress. So, in some specific metals named FCC metals, the maximum resolved shear stress is in the planes of maximum atomic density. So these atomic planes start to move and we call these planes and directions slip systems. Generally, crystal plasticity use Schmidt law to compute the stress in each slip system. And by conserve equation, which is equations relates the stress to the strain, strain rate, temperature and other variables, we can compute the stress in each slip system. And, and actually by the Kalsuv equation, we can compute the strain in each slip system. Then we can compute the amount of movement of atomic planes into the material. This strain in each slip system affects many phenomenal, phenomenological uh, mechanisms into the material which is very important in mechanical engineering and materials engineering. Constube equations. If you apply load to the, into different orienta orientations or into different single crystals, you will find that the uh, stress strain behavior is meaningfully different for different orientations. What's the source of these different behaviors? In each slip system, there is a relation between a strain rate and the stress and the strength and other variables. We call this equation in mechanical and materials engineering constitute equation. In each slip system, there is a relation between the amount of movement of planes and the stress and the strength in these planes. One of the source of the strength in this equation, we call it G alpha. One of the sources of strength actually is dislocations. The interaction of dislocations with other dislocations or, or other obstacles or anything like grain boundaries can produce some strains for the movement of the planes. The results. When you apply this construct kind of equation to the material and slip systems, you will find that, as it's clear in this image, you will find that the stress and strain behavior is different in different grains in a polycrystal material. For example, here, if we focus on one grain, we find that the stress and strain behavior is different in a specific grain and and with other grains also. So for each grain or for each single crystals, the stress strain behavior 
is completely different. But how to do that? How you can learn to do your model easily and quickly without more complexities? We have prepared a crystal plasticity training package for you to help you learn it how to do that. In this package, you, you will get the tutorial videos explain all the details from 0 to 100% uh, actually in the tutorial videos. You will get all Abacus UMAT files and you can just run it by clicking and actually improve it in your system. And also you will get extracted graphs and curves. So this training package include formulation video. In this package, we have explained formulation, the crystal plasticity formulation. The variables are explained in details in the videos. The UMAT, the crystal plasticity UMAT is explained line by line to you in this package. And the Abacus model also actually explained step by step to you by the videos. And at the end, the result extraction is explained by the videos. And this package actually includes all Abacus and UMAT files. The download link that you can download this package, all videos, all files by the link in the description. We can also help you to do your Crystal Plasty project. So you, you actually give us your formulation your paper, your document, then we will do it. We will test it with papers results and we will prepare a package for you, a training package for you about your, Ab your Abacus project. So you will get a package of your project, including the tutorial videos, all Abacus and Subroutine files and tested results with the papers. You can start to learn it and to work on that. Again, you can order your project by the link in the description. Thank you for your attention and please subscribe us and go to our website fesis.uk. You will find many uh, helpful topics. Thank you for your attention. Hello. You want to learn UMAT subroutine in Abacus easily and quickly. UMAT is a subroutine to define a new mechanical behavior for materials. Stay with us. The first question, which is very important, is that why UMAT? Why we need UNA UMAT subroutine? Consider you have a sample and you want to apply load and by modeling and simulating, predict the mechanical response of this sample, predicting the stress strain curve. The first strategy is that you have some of the points of your stress strain behavior from lab or from published experiments. You can easily go to the abacus to the property, define a new mechanical behavior, plastic behavior, and enter those points like this. This is the simplest way of solving the problem, but it is not precise because Abacus interpolates between these points and solves the problem in all points. If you want to solve your problem more precisely, then you need to have a constitutive equation, a constitutive behavior for your material. An equation in which the stress is a function of a strain, temperature and a strain rate. 
in this example we have a question we have a material obeys the, this equation which is Johnson Cook equation again if you have the Kansuv equation which is well known and included in the abacus you can go to the abacus again go to the property you find a material and instead of entering the points you can define the behavior and enter the parameters and constants of your model here it is Johnson Cook model it is more precise solution because you have an equation for all your points but consider you have a material or new material or a new consumer equation the equation between a stress and the components is very new which is not included in the abacus and you don't have points so what you can do then you need a place to write this equation or your equations and define the abacus that obey this behavior to solve my problem this is the reason we need UMAT because our equation is new the next important thing about any subroutine especially UMAT is UMAT inputs and outputs UMAT is a machine accepts some inputs process on inputs and export the inputs as an outputs UMAT has some variables a stress a strain DDSTD and some of the variables you can see here actually all these variables are, are being computed in the abacus transferred to the UMAT in the UMAT we need to write some equations based on our consumed behavior to recompute these variables all the variables and return back all these variables to the abacus this is how abacus and umat interact with each other which is necessary to write a well working umat here for an example we explain one of the most important variables of umat which is dds dde consider you have a stress and a strain at this point and you want to compute or predict the stress at the next point how you can do that the first thing comes into the mind is that you have the slope of the diagram if you have the slope of the delta stress with respect to delta strain then you can linearly solve this problem and predict the stress at each point so if you have a stress as a function of a strain then by making a derivative you can define the DDS DDE for your formulation so we call this slope of the diagram DDS DDE this is the nature of this variable for all variables in based on your equation you need to well understand the nature and the source of the variables for example in elastic regime and for elastic problems the elastic stiffness matrix is dds dd matrix we say that you can learn umat easy and fast but is it really possible to learn UMAT in a week? If yes, how? UMAT has many details, many variables. But do you really need to know all details to solve your problem? Of course not. Only necessary aspects are enough to solve 
your problem. UMAT has many details. If you want to learn all details, maybe you will need more than five years to be an expert in UMAT writing. But in your problem, no. Maybe in your equations, only three of them are enough for you. So you can save your time and save your energy. To this end, we have prepared a UMAT training package for you. This package includes some videos. A video explaining the formulation, all the construct equations. The next videos explain UMAT variables, something like I explained the DDS DDE. Another video explains whole UMAT line by line how the formulation converted to UMAT codes. Any UMAT needs to be solved in Abacus software. So the Abacus models actually are explained step by step in another videos. At the end, the result extraction and comparing with the experiments is explained. All Abacus and UMAT files are also included in this package by downloading. This package includes three examples. Example number one, which is a simple UMAT, only most necessary details are explained for beginners. Example number two, which is medium UMAT, more details are explained to be more expert. And example number three, which is a complex UMAT, all details are explained for advanced users. You can simply download this package and use it to learn UMAT easily and quickly by the link in the description or from the website, our website fesis.uk. You need more, you don't have time, you don't want to learn every aspect and you want your UMAT to be written sooner. Okay, we can write your UMAT, test it, verify it with published results and teach it to you with videos and meetings. So you can order your project also by the link in the description or the website fesis.uk. Thank you for your attention. Hello. You want to learn VUMAT subroutine in Abacus easily and quickly. UMAT is a subroutine to define a new mechanical behavior for materials. Stay with us. The first question which is very important is that why VUMAT? Why we need VUMAT to solve our problem? Consider you have a sample and you want to apply load for that in a dynamic way and predict by modeling and simulation the mechanical response, the stress-strain behavior or the load displacement curve. The first strategy is that you have some of the points of your stress-strain or load displacement curve from the lab or published experimental results. Then you can easily go to the Abacus property, define a new material, go to the plastic behavior and enter those points like this. Abacus interpolates between these points and predicts the behavior of the material in all points. This is the simplest way but it is not precise because of interpolation. If you want to solve your problem more precise, 
then you need to have the constuve behavior or constuve equation of your material. Your material mechanically obeys some rules. If you have equation and the equation is included in the abacus, then you can go to the abacus again to property, materials, mechanical, and instead of entering the points, define the behavior. For example, here it is a Johnson Cook. You can enter the parameters and constants of your equations. Abacus will solve your problem in all points based on this equation. This is more precise because you have equation. But if, but if you have a new equation for a new material, new consumer equation, and the equation is not included in the abacus to enter the parameters and constants, then you will need a place to write your equations and force the abacus to solve the problem based on your equations. This place is the UMAT property. The important thing about the VUMAT subroutine learning is UMAT actually inputs and outputs. VUMAT inputs, sorry, VUMAT inputs and outputs. VUMAT has some variables. Some of them are inputs from the abacus. In VUMAT, we process on the inputs and export the inputs processed inputs as an output. Actually, these variables are computed in the abacus. The old value values or the initial values transferred to the VUMAT. Into the VUMAT, we need to write a new equation or some of some new equations to redefine these values and the new values of the variables return back to the abacus. This is how abacus and VUMAT interact with each other, which is necessary to understand to write a good working VUMAT. Here we explain one of the most important variables of VUMAT subroutine, which is a stress, and here a stress new. Consider you have a stress and a strain at this point and you want to predict and compute the stress at the next point. What you can do? In a dynamic way, the strategy is that you, the new value is the old value plus the derivative function, which is the function of the slope of the diagram and the incremental amount of the strain, as you can see here. For example, in Elastics, elasticity and elastic problems, the slope is elastic modulus or elasticity stiffness matrix. Well understanding of all these variables actually is necessary to write a good, a good VUMAT. We say you can learn VUMAT easy and fast. But is it really possible to learn VUMAT simply in a week? If yes, how? VUMAT has many details, variables, and interactions. But do you really need to know all details to solve your problem? Of course not. Only necessary aspects are enough. If you want to learn all aspects and interactions and equations and the functions of the VUMAT, maybe you will need more than five years and you don't have this time. So you can save your energy and you can save your time by understanding only necessary aspects to solve your problem. But how? We have prepared for you a VUMAT training package in which you can solve your problem by understanding only necessary aspects. In this package, there are some videos. Some videos explaining the formulation, the kinds of equation, the relation between a stress, a strain, temperature, and a strain rate. 
The VUMAT variables are explained in the videos. The VUMAT, the whole VUMAT is explained line by line by details in the videos. Any VUMAT needs to be solved by Abacus Solver, then Abacus model is explained step by step. The result extraction and comparing with the experiments is explained in other videos. And all Abacus and VUMAT files are also included in this package. This package includes three examples. Example number one, which is a simple view mat and most necessary details are explained for the beginners. Example number two, which is a medium view mat and more details are explained for uh, actually to, to be more expert. And example number three, which is a complex view mat and almost all details are explained for advanced users. To download this package, you can click on the download link in description or go to our website feaassist.uk. You need more, you don't have time, and you want your VUMAT to be written sooner? Okay, we can write your VUMAT, test it, verify and validate it with experimental results and teach it to you in videos and online meetings. You can order your project also by the link in the description or referring to our website feassist.uk. Thank you for your attention. Hello, you want to learn Umesh Motion subroutine in Abacus easily and quickly. Indeed, Umesh Motion is a subroutine to define mesh displacement or mesh velocity in Abacus. This subroutine is being used mainly in VR problems to prevent mesh problems in adaptive meshing. Stay with us. Umesh Motion Variables Umesh Motion has some variables. Some of them are inputs we need to get those inputs processed on them and export those inputs as an output into the Abacus. In other words, Abacus computes nodes positions, time, variables. We need to get these variables and processed in the UMesh motion and compute the displacement or velocity of the nodes in x, y and z direction and return these variables into the Abacus. Abacus uses again these variables to recompute the node's positions and all the necessary variables. This is how Abacus and Umesh Motion interact with each other, which is necessary to well understand to write a well-working Umesh Motion subroutine. Here I explain one of the variables, U local. Consider you have a point x1, y1, z1. This point is going to be transferred to point 2. So u local 1 is the displacement or velocity in x direction, u local 2, two in 2 direction, y direction, and u local 3 in 3 direction or z direction. And these variables needs to be well explained to understand the UMesh motion, which is one of the complex subroutines in Abacus. They say you can learn easy and fast, but is it really possible to learn UMesh motion simply in a week? How? UMesh motion has many details, but do you really need to know all details and variables to write your problem? or to write your UMesh motion subroutine? Of course not. Only necessary aspects are enough. By focusing on your problems and your variables, you can save your energy and your time. To this end, we have prepared a UMesh motion training package for you. In this package, the UMesh motion formulation is explained in the video. You 
two mesh motion variables are explained in detail and U mesh motion subroutine is explained line by line in the videos. Any U mesh motion subroutine needs to be solved by Abacus solver. So Abacus model is explained step by step in separated video. And at the end, result extraction is explained in another video. And all Abacus and U mesh motion files are included in this package. By this package, you can learn U mesh motion systematically and easily. This package includes three examples. Example number one, which is a simple U mesh motion, and most necessary details are explained. Example number two, which is a medium U mesh motion, and more details are explained. And in example number three, which is a complex U mesh motion, all details are explained in uh, videos. You can download this package by the link in the description or directly go to faassist.uk. You want more? You don't have enough time? And you want your new mesh motion subroutine to be written sooner? Okay, we can write your new mesh motion subroutine, test it with published results, and teach it to you by online meetings and training videos. Again, you can order your project by the link in the description or directly go to feassist.uk. Thank you for your attention. Hello? You want to learn UEL subroutine in Abacus easily and quickly. UEL is a subroutine to define a new element in Abacus. Consider you have a one-dimensional element with points A and B. For example, temperature in this element is interpolating between the temperature of point A and temperature of point B. So, a interpolation function computes and defines the temperature in any points in this element. If you want to have more precise solution, you need to add point C and a new interpolation function. Interpolation function can be linear or cubic. You need to define your function in UEL subroutine. For two and three dimensional problems, it's same. We need to define a new element with a new interpolation function. To well understand these things, stay with us. UEL variables. UEL has some variables. Some of them are inputs. We need to get those inputs, process on them, and export them as outputs to the abacus. In other words, abacus computes some variables, which is the displacement of the points, the derivative of displacement of the points, the velocity of the points, coordinates and position of the points, and these variables. We need to get these variables and define interpolation metrics, interpolation function, and the elements, force metrics, variables, and return these new variables, return back to the abacus. Again, abacus gets these variables and compute the U, D, U, V curves. This is how Abacus and UEL interact with each other, which is necessary to well understand to write well working UEL subroutines. As an example, I explain one of the most important variables here, which is the output of UEL, RHS right-hand side metrics. A strain is a function of displacement. Here we add curvature for that. K is curvature. A strain and curvature is a function of UE, which is displacement, by a matrix we call B. B matrix. And when we compute S strain and curvature, then we can compute the force and 
momentum by this S strain and curvature with D. D here is a stiffness matrix or in one dimensional problems F equals to D epsilon. D is E Young modulus a sti elastic a stiffness matrix. So this is the Kanzhou equation. Here we solve uh, by this method we solve our problem. So RHS is F which is by combining these two equations which is integration in the length of the element or area or volume of the element of B F M DL. So you understand what is the RHS you need to update in your problem. It needs more explanations for A matrix and all the variables. We say you can learn UEL easily and quickly, but is it really possible to learn UEL simply in a week? How? UEL has many variables, many details, but do you really need to understand all details to solve your problem? Of course not, only necessary aspects are enough. By focusing up on your problem, your element, and your formulation, you can save your time and energy. We have done this for you by a UEL subroutine training package for you. In this package, the formulation is explained in a video by details. The UEL variables are explained something I explained for RHS for all variables in detail. The whole UEL subroutine is explained line by line in another video. A UEL needs to be solved in abacus input file, so abacus input file is explained step by step in another video. Result extraction is explained also, and all abacus UEL files are included also in this package. This package includes three examples. Example number one with a simple UEL and most necessary details are explained like RHS and A matrix. Example number two, it is a medium UEL with more details. And example number three is complex UEL with, in which all details are explained. It is a systematic way to learn complex UEL subroutine. You can download this package by the link in the description or directly go to feassist.uk. You want more? You don't have time to learn these things and you want your UEL to be written sooner? Okay, we can write your UEL and test it by published results and teach it to you by online meetings and videos. Again, you can order your project by the link in the description or directly go to the FAAssist.uk. Thank you for your attention. Hello, you want to learn creep subroutine in Abacus easily and quickly. Creep is a subroutine to define time dependent plasticity or viscoplastic behavior of materials. Stay with us. Crip formulation. In crip formulation, crip strain rate is a function of stress, strain, time, temperature, or other variables. This function has some forms, for example, time dependent crip, in which strain rate is a function of deviatoric stress and time by entering the parameters a n and m you can predict the behavior by this equation this equation is very simple but it is not precise other form of creep function is power law function in which 
the creep strain rate is a function of creep strain actually and deviatoric stress. Some of the parameters are here. By entering these parameters into the abacus, you can again predict the behavior. Other form of the creep function is sinus hyperbolic function, in which creep is a function of deviatoric stress and actually energy and temperature. You can go to abacus, go to property, mechanical section, plasticity, and there you can see creep and swelling option. And in that section, you can enter all these parameters and predictive behavior. But mostly, you cannot predict the experimental behaviors and you cannot fit the curves, experimental curves, by these equations. So you need to, you need a place to actually write your key formulation there and for Sabeke software to solve the creep problem based on your new equation, which is not one of these equations. This place is creep support. Creep variables. Creep subroutine has some variables, some inputs and some outputs. Actually, some of these variables are inputs from Abacus and in Creep subroutine we do some calculations on them, we process them and we return the new value, values to the Abacus. Indeed, Abacus computes the creep variables, actually transfer the variables which is time, temperature, deviatory stress into the creep. In creep we need to define the creep strains or swelling strains, the state variables and return them back to the abacus. Abacus actually again will use the creep strain to compute the temperature, the stress, and these, these variables, and the, actually this loop will continue to solve our problem. This is how Abacus and Creep interact with each other, which is very important and necessary to write a good Creep subroutine. We say that you can, you can learn Creep subroutine easily and fast, but is it really possible to learn creep subroutine simply in a week? How? Keep up some variables and details. But do you really need to know all details to solve your problem? Of course not. Only necessary aspects are enough. If you want to learn all creep formulations, you don't need them and you are you can actually save your time and energy and learn those aspects that you need in your problem. So, based on this, we have prepared a creep training package for you, which is included many things actually in this package that you can easily learn creep support. In this package, all formulations are explained in details in videos, Creep variables, creep inputs, creep outputs are explained. All of them actually. The creep subroutine is explained line by line in the videos. The details are explained. Any creep subroutine needs to be solved by Abacus software. So Abacus models are explained in details actually by, by the videos. And at the end, the result extraction from creep problems actually is explained in the videos. And all abacus and creep files are included in this package that you can download it. In this package, we have two examples. Example number one, which is a simple creep in that most necessary details are explained for beginners. Example number two, which is a met yummy creep. More details are explained. And in example number three, which is a complex creep, 
all details are explained. You can simply this package, download this package from the link in the description, or you can download this, cap this package by going to our website, which is faassist.uk. You need more. You don't have time actually to look at this package and you want your crypt to be written sooner and we can write your crypt, test it with this test it and verify that with published experimental results and teach it to you in videos and actually uh, online meetings so you can download this package or order your project by the link in description or directly going to feasis.uk. Thank you for your attention. Hello, you want to learn the flag subroutine in Abacus easily and quickly. Indeed, the flux is a subroutine to define heat flux in heat transfer problems and mass flux in mass diffusion problems. In other words, if you want to have movable heat source like laser or movable object in your problems like carbon atom diffusion, you need to define the flux problem. Stay with us. The flux formulation. Before going to details of formulation, you need to understand flux. What is flux? In heat transfer problems, flux is the amount of heat, the amount of energy transferring from a unit of area in unit of time, which is a function of derivative of temperature with respect to x in one dimensional problems. Or for mass diffusion problems, it is a function of concentration with respect to x. And in mass diffusion problems, flux is the amount of objects, the amount of atoms, the amount of molecules, the amount of moving objects transferring in from unit of area and unit of time. The flux variables. The flux has some inputs. We need those inputs processed on the inputs and export those processed inputs as an output into the abacus. In other words, Abacus computes time, temperature, pressure, other variables. We need to get these variables and write our fluxes and actually flux 1 and flux 2 and return back to the Abacus. Again, Abacus gets flux 1 and flux 2 and computes the new variables time, temperature, pressure and other variables. So this is how Abacus and Deflux interact with each other. We need to well understand this interaction to write good Deflux subroutines. For example, what is Flux 1? Flux 1 is actually the derivative of temperature with respect to X. And Flux 2 is the derivative of Flux with respect to temperature. It is written based on your formulation. We say you can learn easy and fast, actually the deflux subroutine. But is it really possible to learn deflux subroutine simply in a week? Deflux has some variables, many details. But you really need to understand all details to write your deflux problem, your deflux actually subroutine? Of course not. Only necessary aspects are enough. By actually focusing on your problem you can save your time and your energy to this end we have prepared a deflux training package in this package formulation actually is explained in details in video it is another videos actually explaining deflux variables the whole deflux subroutines are explained line by line in the videos. Any deflux needs to be solved in Abacus, so Abacus models are explained step by step. And at the end, result extraction is explained in the videos. 
all Abacus Deflux files are included in this package for downloads. Actually, this package includes three examples. Example number one, which is a simple Deflux and most necessary details are explained for beginners. Example number two, which is a medium Deflux, more details are explained. And example number three, which is a complex Deflux, and all details are explained. You can download this package from the link in the description or directly going to FEASIS.UK. You need more. You don't have time actually, and you want your Deflux to be written sooner. Okay, we can write your Deflux subroutine, test it, verify it by published results and teach it to you in videos and online meetings. Again, you can order your project by the link in description or directly going to feassist.uk. Thank you for your attention.